this quirky and vibrant city of Manchester. And raise your hand if you call Manchester home. It's beautiful to see. And I think we can all attest to the fact that wherever we go in the world, whether it's on holiday or for a permanent time, we take a little bit of home with us. And there's a lot of things that shape our lives. Experiences, family, friends, cultures, etc. Some for the good, and others some of life's greatest lessons. For me, a huge part of my past is sports. Since I could run and communicate effectively, I've always been in activities. And by the age of 10, I was competing in gymnastics, swimming, and basketball. When I got to about 13, I knew I had to hone in on a sport. To not be a jack of all trades, and to be a master of one, to really excel. And that's when I found my first love, in the shape of an orange spit. The beautiful game of basketball. She was my first love. I put blood, sweat, tears into her. And she rewarded. I went to many different countries around the world. I played on the for a jun the junior national team in England. I earned a scholarship to America, did two group degrees alongside the game, and met some connections that I hold near and dear to my heart. In January of this year, I came back from the States after eight years of being there. And little did I know then that I was leaving an identity that I'd worked years and years to build the game, my connections, and ultimately a status that I felt very, very comfortable in. <coughs> and owe a lot to the game. It opened so many doors for me that I could never imagined when I was a teenager pursuing this. And I put a lot of time into it. Some would say bordering on obsession. But when I look back and to where I am today, and I look back to January and coming, coming back home, I struggled for many months. I was yearning for a feeling that I had in a different location. I came home, but I felt like I was in a foreign land. I was sort of going through an identity crisis. And what does that bring us today? Timely reflection, my friends. I've had a lot of months of introspection. And throughout my years, I've always been surrounded by peers and people who are close to me. And I've never necessarily spent as much time on my own as I have over these months. And it's taught me a lot. It's taught me a lot about myself. And I've learned that when you control your internal narrative, you allow your consciousness to formulate the world around you. And thinking about that, that's a very, very powerful concept. Because when I look at that and think about the person who I, who I was and comfortable with my peers and then coming back and being in a very different situation, I think self-awareness and understanding your patterns and traits when you're thrown out of your comfort zone really allows you to feel content in the chaos. I want to leave you with this. I want, to, I want you to take some time, whether it's in the morning, maybe the afternoon, evening, whenever your schedule permits it, and just sit with your thoughts. Maybe it's something that's lurking in the shadow. Maybe it's like me, a little bit holding on to an identity that you had in the past. Maybe it's an experience that is better brought to your mind's eye rather than left unchecked. And I believe this allows us to look at where we've been, where we're at, and where we're going. And ultimately, gives us a sense of self-awareness to improve ourselves and go forward in a great light. Because when you write your internal narrative, it helps formulate the world around you. Thank you.